yes yes what's going on everybody so i just want to say this video that you're about to watch was sponsored by the zai experience and because it was sponsored by that not only will you get to see the person behind the zai experience but just for you for a limited time you will get a 10 percent off when you go to the Zai experience. And when you do, you will see that they will look like this. Yes. So we have the body scrub right here. And then we have the body lotion. So make sure you go to the Zai experience to get yours and find out. That's right. You will get 10% off when you go and you check out. All you have to do is just put in will 10 and you get 10% off. So no matter what your order is, no matter how little or how lot, 10% off. So that's money people. Come on, we need to support black businesses. So make sure you go ahead and you support this woman here that you are about to find out. So. Make sure that you go check out thesiexperience.com and this video was sponsored by Desire Experience. Welcome, welcome everybody to a, another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasm. And before we get into it, make sure that you like, click, and subscribe to the channel. That way we get out there and we can get to everybody and anybody who ever wants to see. So today I am joined by a beautiful black woman. I know this woman because we follow each other on Twitter. I was like, yay, let me hit her up. Let's see what's going on. Because not only is she beautiful, black and brilliant, but she also has her own thriving business, which we need to support more. So I would like to welcome my guest, my 313 sister in, Miss Zay. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Nah, nah, it's I. I know, I know, it's no, I. Like, how about you just call me Zay? That's just gonna be for you. Uh, okay, where works for you? <laughs> no. Hey, Will, thank you for having me. Um, I'm Zai, for those of you who don't know, owner, operator, founder, and creator of the Zai Experience. Uh, that is the business that Will spoke of. Um, what is the Zai Experience? It's Please. Please tell me, because I looked it up and I I feel like I know about it, but I don't know about it. Like words can tell you, but a person can tell you so much better. Yeah, no, I completely agree, especially when it comes to my baby. So um, the Zai experience essentially is everything me bundled into a experience that other people can have. Mm -hmm. So the um, core of the business right now is self-care, self-love, promoting um, more of that within our communities, especially um, the Zai experience is all inclusive of everybody, but um, our people in particular, we need more love. We need to pour more into ourselves, into our community, into the things that we care about, um, into our goals and our dreams. We go through, as, as black people, people of color, we go through lots of different struggles that other people who don't um, have as much melanin as we do, don't even have to necessarily think about. You know, yeah. so when it comes to taking a moment to yourself and getting in the bathtub, you know, or even something simple as putting on moisturizer after you get out of the shower. Like there are so many men and well, not so much women, but there's a lot of men that I know that feel like I don't have time to do all of that. You know, like I'm moving, I'm grooving, I got to get to work, I got to provide, I, I have to show up, I have to be a strong black man, you know, when I walk outside. And all okay. of those things are completely true. But if you don't show your temple some love and some affection, you can't show up as you really in those ways. No, you can't. You'll just be crusty as fuck. So. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, no one wants to be crusty. You know? Yeah. So that was the main thing. And then also, um, so it, it came from when I became a mom, 
Um, I wanted to have something to give to my baby. You know, I wanted her to be able to, um, I wanted to be able to leave a legacy. Um, I've always had an entrepreneur spirit. You know, a long time ago, I wasn't going to be working with people for real. I don't last very long in jobs because I want to do things on my own time. I work from home and I be late almost every day. Okay. Wow, that's one thing I don't understand <laughs> with people who work from home. They say, "Oh, I just show up, but I'm always late." Like, nigga, how are you late? All you because I'm scrolling just here, I just been logging in, like because I hit snooze so many times. <laughs> literally, like right there, like I just have to go to my desk. But that's me. Like it doesn't matter where I'm at. I like to move at my own pace, do things on my own time. So that's why I needed to be an entrepreneur. Um, my baby was born with a. Uh, sensitive skin just like I have so I got in the kitchen and started making body butters you know and one thing led to another and now we're like three years later mm-hmm. and I have a whole ass like business you know that I have you know clients and customers people that have been rocking with me I love y'all I appreciate y'all um, I've been able to meet some amazing people I do pop-up shops throughout the city which are really, really dope. Um, yeah, really the sky's the limit. So right now, like we're focusing on products and you know, uh, building relationships, but I would love to, well, we will end up blossoming into an entire um, conglomerate of, you know, an, an organization that does basically a one-stop shop for like your business. So that's the direction we're going. Wow. Well, I mean, since I'm like a little startup, you think you can throw little products my way and I can promote? Absolutely. I, I have no problem doing that. Absolutely. Just like maybe one or two. I mean, because like I got silky, small, smooth, beautiful skin, but I can always use more. Always. Oh, I can tell. I'm, I can tell. You take care of your skin. Like, oh, yes. I'm, yeah. You, you got to moisturize I'm, this shit. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. Look, you got to know. And a lot of people don't know, like the lighter you are. Like the more you kind of need to do, and I think that's what people kind of don't understand. They think you know we have it easy. Like no, we don't <laughs> actually, because I get ridiculously ashy. <laughs> so yeah, gotta get to that. But yeah, my degree is in marketing. So anything marketing makes all the sense in the world to me. Shit, I, I think I hit up the right person then. <laughs> Yes, yes, but definitely. But and you know, it's funny that you say that with the light you are. It's almost like and I and I something that I noticed when I was looking it up, it's like black people, black people specifically, they really don't get a lot of skin cancer. They really don't if you think about it. And it's not a racial thing, it's just like we're not trying to be out baking in the sun all day, every day. Every day. Like we might be out, but well, you still know that- that has a lot to do with you know it's so it's so interesting color colorism is so interesting because like for us and black people you know even though the black of the berry the sweeter the juice for sure okay. the lighter you are the more privilege you have the more okay. you know what i'm saying like it, it happens every day. We see the color wars, you know, on social media. It's, you know, the lighter you are. Perfect example, real quick. Someone on social media was comparing Drea to um, Kendra, um, who is from the city of Detroit. Beautiful young lady. I believe she's cashed out best friend. Y'all don't fight me. I don't be in the mix. I don't, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> No, about all of that. But <laughs> what I do know is this young lady compared to Drea is a knockout. You know what I'm saying? But to see the number of individuals, you know, on social media basically say, no, she isn't. And I'm like, it has to be color. You know, and essentially that's what it was because there's really, I mean, body, shape, talent, everything. But the lighter you are, especially as a woman, you know, I even experienced it. You know, I have darker family members, darker cousins, you know, it's definitely, I've been shown favoritism, you know, and I've had individuals actually tell me, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you know, you're light skin. I like you because you like skin. You a nice little light thing. I was looking for it, you know, and then on the other hand, we got the Karens and the Bobs, 
they're like, <laughs> put me on the grill. Like these people <laughs> created tanning salons to be able to get darker. Yep. And that's another thing. I always like messing with white people. Like sometimes I'll do an experiment and I'll stand outside and I'll go, Woo, look what this place did to me. And they're just like, oh my God, I can be black. I'm like, yep, go in and get it. <laughs> oh, you silly, silly. Yeah, I really am. But oh, it's, it, it's like, I just I just want to mess with people, see what the reaction would be. But oh. you would just be amazed at the, the ignorance that just happens. Like, oh my God, I can be black just like you. Let me sign up. Twenty dollars a month. <laughs> but I do have to say, though, I have to say, I will not front. Um, and I've had a very diverse background and upbringing. You know, mm -hmm. um, my my father married a white woman, um, and I have a brother who is half black and half white. I went to mainly, you know, white schools all of my like middle school and high school career. Um, so I, I've spent a lot of time around mm -hmm. them. You know, so and it's it's a little bit uh fulfilling, you know, to see them copy, you know, like sometimes it's irritating, but I won't lie, like I get a kick out of it, you know, sometimes like yeah, you could never, but you can keep trying. Like your hair's never gonna do this. It's never gonna do this. Never. It don't matter how many times you hold it out straight and take that comb and hit it like that. Mm -hmm. It don't matter, boo. Like and look, it's gonna go right back. Boom. Your hair is yeah. never gonna do that. <laughs> like we are walking magicians, you know. So that part is dope. I like that. Yeah, I have I have issues with my hair. They'd be like, oh well, you have good hair and it matches your skin. And I'm thinking, it see, it's not my fault that. I have good wave texture because like I have really good waves and then when I let it grow out, it's curly, like natural curly. And I even like when I can just throw some water in it like it's fucking sprinter and just walk out like it's that ordinary yeah, day. But in this case, so that's yeah. what we call good hair. Cause let me tell you what's not happening. I'm not waking up in the morning. <laughs> okay. I throw some water on this, my hair gonna laugh. <laughs> It's gonna throw it back at me. Like, what are we gonna do with that, girl? Like, yeah, like, even, even that sometimes. Water, like, spray bottle. Yeah, it's like sometimes I can just do the pretty boy, just be like this, and just keep walking. It's like, okay, <laughs> it don't have to be like this. Look, look, I, it'd be like that. I'm like, I'm grateful for you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's just that, that's the nature of the beast. But I guess it's because, like, with my dad, you know, uh, what my dad is like half and half, so like half black and then like half. Indian or Cherokee or something mm -hmm. and then my mom being half black half white and half something else so there's that mixture and then like all my shit like this was premeditated so it's not like it happened. <laughs> look you like I just came here like uh, yes <laughs> I just showed up and this is what I had and then speaking of which like when we get to the conversation of race people are like well Will what are you I'd be like I'm a person a person yeah I'm a person a human uh -huh. oh, and they'd be like, oh, you can't be, and I'll tell them, well, I'm black. I said, you know what, I could be a lot of other things right now than black, but that's one thing I choose, so. You have to take it for what it is. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I think for the longest time, I think, you know, black people, we were fishing for a minute. We were trying to be mixed. We was looking for mixed, okay? Like, my my second granny on my, my, my daddy's side, twice removed, was Cherokee, you know, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm this and that. It's like, yeah, I'm cool with being black. I'm, I'm grateful and happy to be black. I'm mixed with black and mo black and whatever. Wow. There's some other <laughs> stuff going on down there because my nose is a little, you know, mm -hmm. saying, yep. normal look, you know. So I'm sure it was some mixed thing going on around there, but I'm, I'm black as fuck. <laughs> See, here's the mixture I like to throw at people when they say, "Well, you can't be black." I'm like, "Okay, I'll break it down to you like this." Not you can't I'm, be black. People yeah. are Yeah, I'd be like, "Well, my dad is 50% black, and my mom is 50% Negro, and my grandfather was a color." Oh Lord, not you broke it down like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then you you sit the see the butterflies going yeah. and it's spinning like wait what a minute. I'm like, yeah, I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, yeah, I'm a black colored Negro, so what else you got to say? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you get into well, you don't look black because you don't talk black. 
I'm like, you know, how am I supposed to talk? Like, like, like that makes sense. Yeah. Like that's that's <laughs> how I want people to start coming back. Like, cause you know, for for my brothers and sisters, for y'all that like have to go through that, where individuals try to tell you what you do and you don't look like, yeah, well, you didn't look like an asshole, but hey, mm-hmm. here we are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have big nose and big lips. It's just it right. that way. Right. My bad. <laughs> well, we're getting off topic, but um, so your business, <laughs> your business. Uh, now I, we, like I said, we both are Detroiters. So, are you located? Like, are you in a shop, or do we go to a website to be able to get your uh, products? So currently, you buy from me on the website, uh, which mm-hmm. is thezaiexperience.com. T h e z a i x p e r i e n c e. dot com. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that's where you can purchase. I have not gotten placement yet. Storefront. That's the. That's the word. It, it just brand. came back to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, not as of yet, but definitely working on that. Um, one of my favorite things to do too is show up at pop-up shops. So I definitely promote those um, on my business social media page and my personal page, um, which is also the Zai Experience, which is the same across all platforms, regardless of where you find me. Um, so yeah, you can buy online. You can also, if you know me, you know, like Will, like you, you can hit me up, you know, directly. You could DM me, you know, and mm-hmm. let me know, hey, I'm ashy. And I can be like, say less. I got well, you. Well, I'm not Ashy Larry, you know, just like. <laughs> or you could be like, I'm, I'm about to be because I'm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I know I probably need some because I think my skin is less moisturized, like in the fall and winter, because, you know, like not getting enough exposure. Mm-hmm. But then in the sum- spring and summer, I still feel a little, you know, crustiness going on yeah. even after I get out the shower. So yeah, so like most creators of uh, body care products have like a uh, most of us have a winter regimen and or I say I won't say winter. I will say a cold weather regimen and a warm weather regimen because you have different needs. Like you said, you know, you have way different needs. And then especially being out here in Michigan, um, we it's very interesting because it's extremely dry in the winter, but very humid in the summer. Mm-hmm. So like you can literally like get up and not moisturize, but because of the humidity in the air, it'll make you feel almost a little bit sticky or you'll get some moisturization because it's you it's humid, you know, it's water yeah. droplets all in the air. But in the winter, we're not having that. And that's why a lot of us be walking around here looking crusty. Well, I'm, I'm not gonna say that because I'm not crazy. That's why a lot of people be walking around here, especially men, you know, like y'all wake up in the morning, y'all start in the car, you're cleaning off the car. And you look at your knuckles and it looks like you just got done fighting a bag of salt. Mm-hmm. I know, it sucks. Then you want me to shake your hand. <laughs> like, do these look like the hands of somebody who wants to shake that? Like, I don't. I mean, it's nothing for you to get them It done. is because it's not like we're walking around with lotions in our Why pockets. aren't you? There could easily be a small, I, I make small jars of butter. You can put that small jar of butter right in the whip. But still, no, still. Because some of these men is carrying bags. (laughs) Yeah, that's what we call heat bitches. So, those those men that carry bags are heat bitches because you will not catch me one. I was raised to have a wallet in my pocket, and that's it. I ain't carrying no dead bag. You're not going to catch me with no man with no bag. I, my bag is big enough for the both of us bags. Like, mm-mm. Now, if it's like a book bag or a little, you know, nice little strap, yeah. I'm barely okay with one of them because why do you have a backpack? Like, unless we're going on a hike or an adventure. You don't need to be walking around with no backpack. Like, no, you don't. But, you know, brothers, they just see that. They just want to do it. Like, you know. And they just, they just want to be trendy. And I'm like, okay, stay trendy over there. Like don't, cause I, I ain't walking around with no bag. Just don't, I just don't even approach. If you have a bag, just don't approach. Just take the bag off and then come and see me. Like, and it doesn't make it real quick. It doesn't make it less feminine because y'all put it this way. Like that don't make it better because <laughs> they put it across the 
No, like you may as well carry it like a bag or fling it over your shoulder or something like. Especially if you got titties, and it really makes it look like because it's in the middle. You know what I'm saying? Like it's definitely not focused. So you know, because I'm gonna look. You know, I'm gonna look. Well, you would not catch me with no fanny pack. It ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, sis, don't take your gun out. It's like, sis, my name look, is Jamal. Hold on, baby, hold my bag. <laughs> Wait, <what? laughs> Who's um, fighting who so, here? Come on now. <laughs> I wouldn't even know what to do. Like, I'd be holding it like. <laughs> Who's is bigger? Okay. <laughs> like, you got some lip gloss in here. What you got? <laughs> oh, you got some what? candy wipes. Okay. Candy wipes. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> If you would say hand sanitizer, all right, but handy wipes. No, if what... you come in, you got handy wipes. Mm. You don't got no, or you have a nice little bath of body wipes. She said it, folks. That's what I would imagine to be. She, she said it. Little cross body fanny pack. Remember, people, if you want to get all your body products that are 100% made, not by Chinese or no Africans, <laughs> please go hit up my girl. She will right. get you right. She that will um, get you handmade. right. Handmade. Now, how she makes it, that's her business. But, you know, at least she'll get it to you. <laughs> right. Magic. Ancient, ancient, ancient nigga, nigga secret. <laughs> Ain't your nigga secret. <laughs> Yo, she's crazy. Like I knew you, I knew you was on one because we follow each other on Twitter, but I know you was like this. <laughs> I'm the, the same person. Like I promise. Like I'm really, I'm really like that. Like <laughs> ain't your nigga secret. No, ain't your Chinese secret. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. 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 Um, so uh like with your business with are is it just you or do you have other people that are working for you? So it is just me. The Zai experience is that. Mm. Yep, it okay. is just me from from beginning to end. We are a one woman show right now. Uh marketing, promoting, website creation, digital content creation, product creation. Um, I made everything that you see. Um, when you get that product, I created everything, all the way down to the graphics on the labels, you know. And so everything has been made by me and, and has my touch on it. So thankfully we're uh we're at a space where I can still handle everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so it hasn't gotten overwhelming to the point where it's like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna need some help. Um, but also my daughter's a really great helper. Like, <laughs> like she's awesome. She loves making stuff with me, so. And it's just you, like, do you want to like uh, hire like one or two people just to have um, them extra hands? I would like to, um, I wanna say <laughs> hire and have people work. For me, I like to work with people. Like I'm more of a collaborator, like than I am um, anything else. I think. Um, so I would like to have, you know, if it got to there to that point, you know, or excuse me, <clears throat> when we get to that point, there you go. <laughs> Manifest like it. There you go. Fan and have some people, um, you know, on my team that that can assist, that are passionate. Um, have the same goals, you know, and that um, that are in alignment, and that ultimately just love creating because that's really what it takes. Just you know, loving to create and make stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Well, I'm not trying to make you turn into you know a sweatshop, so I'm just asking. So. Oh no 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 no! We can't. <laughs> we, look, I told you I don't even like to show up for stuff on time. Well, I'd be a terrible sweatshop runner. Okay. I've been eating uh, snacks and popsicles and smoke breaks. <laughs> the yeah. same plate. <laughs> yes. Like, it would be like, no, it wouldn't be a sweatshop. It would definitely be a joy shop. 
So uh, I want to go back a little bit because I don't know if I asked you this. What was the idea in your head that you wanted to create this? Like what put it in motion and say, hey, I can do this? Because I know you say you like it making your own, but what was it when you said, I can turn almost this hobby into a business? So as I was pondering and figuring out, so after I had my baby, um, I always knew I was going to be a stay-at-home mom. You know, like that's always been my goal for me, uh, has been to stay home, you know, and, and be hands on raising my babies. But I love making my own money. I love um, business. I love marketing. I love, you know, seeing a business plan go from paper to 3D. Like I love that whole process. So as I was sitting down and thinking about what I could do, I just started uh, putting together a list of like my attributes and things that I was naturally good at. Um, and then after I did that, I started looking at, <clears throat> at the cost to begin. And so as I was doing my research and it was mm, like right before the pandemic hit, so as I was doing my research, I noticed that, you know, self-care was becoming trendy. Um, and a lot of people were hopping on that. And I realized that I could probably get down on this, you know, in some way. So I got in the kitchen one day. Well, no, so I went to, I want to say Michael's. And I got some, well, first I did some research on the internet. Like, what do I need? What are my ingredients? You know, what am I going to do? You know, because I'm about to experiment. I'm about to go in this kitchen. I'm about to try not to cook no crap. But I'm definitely about to make something. <laughs> <laughs> definitely well, about to get on this stuff. Well, right? the recipe is baking soda ice cubes. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, continue. <laughs> But the funny thing is, because I make bath bombs as well. So when I make my bath bombs, I buy pounds of baking soda. Mm -hmm. And it'd be all over me. Like, and every time I'm making them, you know, I'm I'm thinking I probably got young Jeezy playing in my head or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like a whole drug lord, you know, but I'm making bath bombs, which is probably why the energy be so popping in them, because I'd be, you know, dancing around the kitchen pretending I got a money counter on in the background, you know, like it's money everywhere. It's, it's, it's topless women everywhere with like masks on and stuff, like laying things up. Like it gets really serious. This ain't mind. the Carter. Don't, don't do it. Don't do that. It went there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't the Carter. Come on It went there like that's the weird thing, you know. <laughs> you know half a brick a day, you know. Bro, Girl, stop. But Just stop. <laughs> So no, so I got in the kitchen after I got all my ingredients and I remember making like my first body butter. And when I made it, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't exactly like what I wanted it to be, but it sparked something inside of me. And I was like, bro, like I can really make this. And then I had my first pop-up shop and it was Black Friday. And I couldn't believe, like, so many people supported me. A lot of my friends showed up to the event. Um, everybody bought something. And I knew that people would buy things because, like, you know, they love me or, you know, we're friends, you know, or whatever. But when individuals started coming back, mm -hmm. that's when I knew, like, okay, we're on yep. to something. Yep. You know? And so I think also, mm -hmm. um, I think also a big part of why individuals I think enjoy the products is because I put you know I put my energy into them you know I put a lot of love and intention into every single thing that I make you know like oftentimes I won't if 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 I have an order to do until like if my attitude isn't right or my energy isn't right or I'm not feeling it like I will do the work that's necessary to get my energy to where it needs to be before I dare create something. Mm -hmm. you know? So that way I can ensure like, this is gonna make you feel good because I felt good while making it, you know? And yeah. that's all creators, whatever you're creating, you're putting your energy into, whether it's digital, <clears throat> um, whatever it is, you're putting your energy into it. And people can feel that. 
True. And just like, you know, with my, I guess my digital imprint, like I'm sitting here all day, you know, creating and I'm writing and then I'm editing. And it's like, I want something to look good from beginning all the way to the end. And that middle part is just, you get to that middle part thinking, do I want to keep going or can I take a break? Because if you take a break, you're like, well, I'll never, get, I'll never get back to it. Ooh. I'll never get that same energy that I had at the beginning Ooh. that I want to get at the end. So, yeah. So I understand. I understand. And when you was talking about you do everything, like, yes, I've created my website. I've created every single video that I did, every single audio I've done, um, you know, to everything. So it's, it's a feeling that, it's complete that you're doing it and you're not getting someone else to do it for you. Because yeah, I can go pay someone to make a website for me, but I don't know how it works. I don't. And you so know there's... nobody can get your vision out of your head better than you. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it came down to for me. Because essentially, <clears throat> I'm not a graphic designer. That is yeah. not what I do. I color. I can I can color real good. Like if the if the picture is already drawn, I can color it real good. So you can but stand like, the lines. What? <laughs> I'm in the lines. I'm staying. It's going down. Mm -hmm. All right. But as far as um, like drawing, you know, like that, I'm not. That's not my strong suit. And I really wanted to outsource, like for example, my label creation. Um, I wanted someone else, you know, to, to make my logo, you know, do all of that. But thanks to, for one, thanks to technology, because Canva is my bestie, okay? Um, thanks to, to that program, I just got on there and started playing around and I had to bring my vision out, you know? And when it was done, I really looked at it like nobody could have done this this better than me really yeah you know so it's it's nothing like doing it yourself yes it's tiring yes it's stressful yes i experience burnout yes i get upset yes i get stressed out i still work a full-time eight to five thirty i mean excuse me see that's not facial it's nine to five thirty <laughs> i still be sleep at eight but anyway I work a full nine to five thirty. You know, I'm also a mom, um, and on top of that, you know, I'm I, I have a whole life, you know, that I'm that I'm designing and living in real time. So it's a lot, but it's fulfilling. Mm -hmm. It's fulfilling, you know, and nobody can can when no one can take that from me. You know what I'm saying? Like I I created that. You can't sue me for it. You know what I'm saying? And that's what a lot of people run into. A lot of individuals um, who are creatives but have a problem with creating a fresh idea oftentimes have to uh, mimic or replicate something. And the issue with replication in business is you will get the shit sued out of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it becomes stale. You're like you can't come up with fresh ideas. So, like you said, you got to mimic or even just yeah. take and ideas then, from that. Now, let me tell you something. <clears throat> I'm gonna sue you if I see <laughs> what if I see something that I, you know what I'm saying, like pay for, you know, and I, I put blood, sweat, blood, sweat, and tears into, and you just simply say, you know what, I really like that. I'm just gonna take this right here and stick this on my stuff and say, oh, this is mine. Mm -hmm. Like, how dare you? You non-creative person. Like, in that case, those people need to hire somebody. True. True. Hire, a, hire a, a, a different person to be able to, to handle that. Yep, and that's why even for my name, sarcasm and orgasms, it's it's common but it's uncommon because mm -hmm. A lot of people are have sarcasm, but they don't have orgasms attached to it. So what did I did? I went, I went and I bought both names, both names, and they are trademarked to me, so no one can take them ever. Yes, and that's just from listening to other people, to other creators that said, "Hey, well, you're onto something here. Take advantage now, while while you're still new, before you start becoming so well known." Uh huh. I remember. I don't know if well, you probably remember, but remember when Cardi B first started saying, "I think it was the old." Look, I don't even want to say it because 
it was the O-K-U-R-R-R. Mm -hmm. She yeah. wrote the R. Mm -hmm. And she noticed it caught on and she trademarked it, I believe. And I saw a lot of people in our community drag her. You know, like, who are you to, you can't own, you know, a word. And, and it really was eye-opening to me because it was like, no, <laughs> people own words. People, people own intellectual property. Mm -hmm. Our people just don't know. You know because what I'm they, saying? Because we're not told. That's the thing. Because we're not told. We, we yeah. didn't come here with nothing. So everything that we had was either given to us and then what they gave to us, we took that shit and broke it apart and then turned it into something else and called that ours. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of people were just kind of like, what? Like, you can't, how How dare you, you know, own the word? And then now you look later on, every time somebody say that thing, you got to pay that one. Wow. Well, ain't nobody going to take this shit from me because I created it. It was hard. I mean, I'm... <laughs> I'm doing something every single day for yeah. this podcast. So, yeah. And I'm just trying to build and create something that I am proud of. Because like you, I don't want to be working every day. I want to get up and just be able to create and sleep. And then it just be my passive income that when I feel like working, I can work. Mm -hmm. But I'm tired of punching a clock. That to everyone out there, I'm sorry. But I'm tired of punching the white man's hey. clock. It's, it's doing no justice for me. Sad. <laughs> like super sad. Like mm -hmm. I was something crazy. My I got up from my desk yesterday and my leg was swollen. My leg was swollen because when I sit at my desk, I cross my legs. I had my legs crossed so long at my desk while working that my leg was swollen. And I was like, what in the 30s is this? Like, what the hell? I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, I now I have to schedule like times in my day where like I'm getting up and I'm being active, you know, versus on my off days, I'm up when the sun is up. I am feeling refreshed. I'm not trying to sleep in. I'm trying to take advantage of everything. I'm cleaning up. I have all the energy, you know, all the motivation, you know, to do all the things. And it's, yeah, I feel you. Punching the clock. And that's why when you say having somebody work for me, like that don't even sound good. Well, I see. I didn't. Know. I didn't mean it like that. I just no, mean I, it was I just like it's like just hiring a team, and you know. Mm -hmm. And that's why, like even even when we talk about that. So when I um, started to research bigger companies and how they move, one of the companies I paid attention to was Google, and that was because of how they treat their employees. And the type of environment they create for their employees you know they make people want to show up like that's the type of, of organization and business that i want to have i want you to want to come to the Zai experience and create i want you to be like i'm taking my talents over there i feel like i can be an asset to this team i feel like this organization can be an asset to me you know, like it feels good being here. I don't feel like I'm being taken advantage of. I'm not being mistreated. I'm heard, I'm understood. Like those are all the things that I know that me personally, I don't get in the corporate workplace. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't always feel heard. You know, we have a whole team chat. Like, you know, I'm in customer service. So when I have a question, I can type my question in that chat. Sometimes people do not be responding to me. Like, <laughs> like maybe I can, like, they just didn't see my shit. And I'm like, oh, really? Okay. You know, and that's 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 disheartening to an employee, quite frankly. Because as, as a, a team leader, I'm supposed to be able to come to you. When I can't figure it out, I'm supposed to be able to come to you and figure it out. And it's very important for me to seem competent in whatever I'm doing. So, mm -hmm. you know, it can feel very uncomfortable when you feel like you don't know what you're doing. So I want to have a really cool, like, community, you know, where um, I can see it in my head. <laughs> and, like, it's really dope. <laughs> Super dope. Like, I see the compound and everything. Like, it's a whole community. Compound? You know, like, mm-hmm. It's big. It's big. But you said compound. Sounds almost compound. like a boat. I so you're going to do the Zai code. Is that what you're saying? Telling me? So now you're using words, <laughs> you know, an insinuation. I'm not insinuating. Look, it's not My a My sister, you said, you said, I want a compound. Like, 
cult. Experiencing <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's how they label it. And it still is a cult where you got like, people boy, walking around with chains. No Kool Aid over here. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, all right, Jim Jones, that's fine. Yeah. No, when I say compound, I just feel like you know this really cool space that has like multiple buildings and like situations for different things you know where you will be able to comfortably you know work um rest if you needed to um daycare situation you know like for children or even just an area like for children to be like i really want to have an, an inclusive space that just promotes just success, just success factory. Here we go. Here's one, you, and you can take this. I'll give it to you. Okay. An oasis of life. Voila. Yes, o oasis of life. Yeah. And you can take that. I won't take no trademark for it. Y'all heard him. Well, you heard him so he's not gonna sue me. It's <laughs> <laughs> being recorded. Whatever. This in the court of law. <laughs> <laughs> You done? Yeah. You done? Okay. <laughs> but you know what? This this was so good. Um, it was so good talking with you. Um, you telling me about your business and just more about you because, like I said, I know about you, but I don't know about you. So yeah. it's always good yeah. to conversate. So now, if they want to reach you, which mm -hmm. they will, because I will be sponsoring your stuff, they yeah. want to reach you. How would they get a part? How not? How would they get a hold of you to yes, order? So, um, I can be reached across all social media platforms: uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. The Zai Experience again: T H E V A I X E E R I E N C E. Um, the same for the website. Um, yeah, I'm not hard to find. Um, get at me. Mm -hmm. And for those who are listening. For those who are listening and hit this, you will get a 10% off because you listen to the podcast. So when you go, I will make sure that I'll put a code down for everybody to listen. That yeah. way you can get a piece of the Zai experience. That's hard. Yes. <laughs> so I want to thank you so much for joining me, Zai. Oh my goodness. It was so good sitting here talking with you and talking about your upcoming Oasis of Life. So. Yes, yes, yes. It was yes. amazing. I think my yes. favorite part is being able to really take um, our connection and our friendship offline. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's been super fun. Neither of us are catfish. So oh, yeah. that's always a plus. So yes. thank you so much for having me. Um, this was awesome. Hopefully, I can come back again. Oh, you know what? You are always welcome. Always welcome. Whenever you want to like promote more. Uh, let me know. I will, you know, post yours on my socials and we'll just go from there. So remember, people, if you want to get a hold of her, make sure you go to everything Zai Experience. And you also will get a 10% discount code when you go and order. So this has been another episode of Sarcasm Orgasm. I have been joined by the beautiful Miss Zai. Thank you for joining me and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.